this lesson, we're going to introduce how your data is organized into a single abstract data structure and describe how CockroachDB uses that to divide, replicate, and distribute the data across the cluster. This will give us a framework to understand at a high level how the cluster scales out, which is important to everyone because it has performance implications. It'll also help to build a conceptual foundation for things to come. First, let's talk about the ordering of your data in CockroachDB. Take all of your data and imagine it in a single grand structure we're going to call the key space. It's an ordered set of key value pairs with the full path to each record in the key part of each entry, including where it lives and the primary key of the row. For now, we're abstracting away lots of implementation details, like how a table is identified or where the indexes fit in, etc. The important thing is that Everything we can use to find a record, including the primary key, are all part of the key space. The rest of a row's columns are typically put into the value part of the KV store and don't affect the ordering. So the key space is all of this, with additional metadata all together in a grand, ordered data structure. For a single node cluster, the key space is a fairly accurate description of how the data is actually organized by the storage layer. But in a production cluster, the implementation gets complicated. The reason why it's a useful abstraction is because the cluster divides the key space into what we call ranges. When a range grows beyond a certain limit, 64 megabytes by default, it gets split into two. When those grow, each gets split again, and so on. Splits can also occur for other reasons, but ranges are important because they are the units that CockroachDB replicates and distributes to the nodes of the cluster. Here's a visualization showing some data getting divided up into seven ranges and six nodes for our cluster, represented by the cylinders. Multiple copies of each range, called replicas, are distributed among the nodes to keep the cluster balanced. In CockroachDB, the default replication factor is three, and that's what we see here, three replicas of each range. Moreover, each replica is always on a different node. They never double up. We could increase the replication factor to larger odd numbers such as 5 or 7, to increase the resiliency. Here's what 5 might look like. Higher replication factors do come at the cost of having to store, update, and synchronize more replicas of each range in your cluster. Sometimes that's worth the cost, sometimes not. Note that your replication factor doesn't have to be the same for all of your data. You can set a different replication factor for each database or table if you like, or get even more granular if you have an enterprise license. Okay, that was a lot and fast, so let's review. In this lesson, we went over the basic model we should have in our head when we think about cluster data, the key space. We learned that CockroachDB takes the key space and divides it up into ranges, that it then makes copies of those ranges called replicas up to a replication factor, and that it distributes those replicas among the nodes of the cluster. Soon we'll see more, but that's it for this lesson. Yeah.